Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're gonna be doing a vinyl wrap on a tumbler, and then we're gonna be coating it in this glitter cowhide look. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that you guys can shop those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. All right, let's start with the hardest part first. We're gonna go ahead and wrap that vinyl on this handled tumbler. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and prep my tumbler because we are adhering our vinyl straight to the stainless portion of it. So I'm just gonna take my sanding block, I'm gonna give it a, a good rough up here with it, and then I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol and I'm gonna spritz it down really well and remove any little particles that might be on it. So the vinyl that I'm using today, I got in a Muse box through Mr. Nola's Glitter. This one in particular is called Saddle Up, and if it's available, I will make sure to put it down in the description box for you guys. I do believe they have the box up itself too. So, But what inspired me for this design was one of the accents that came on one of the sheets, the rodeo vibes there, it had everything that I wanted to do on that accents sheet. So that, that's what inspired this look today. So the next thing we're gonna do is just measure about how far down you want your vinyl to go. I know I'm gonna be painting the bottom, so I don't need it to go too far down. So I'm gonna aim for about five and a half on this particular size tumbler here. I'm gonna leave about a half inch gap around the bottom. So if you guys notice, there's a white edging around the vinyl uh, decal itself. You just wanna cut and remove that, but I didn't do that yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this at six inches down giving myself about a half inch leeway because it's about a half inch completely around the decal itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. I'm gonna go ahead and use my little cutting board here to cut it or you can just use a straight edge and, and cut you know, a straight line for yourself. Then I'm just gonna come through and remove that extra white area right outside of the design. And I'm just going to double check and make sure everything fits about how I want it and then we're gonna start getting this applied. Before I apply it, I'm gonna go ahead and roll back about a half an inch of that paper backing, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and remove that out of my way so that way it doesn't kind of get caught up on anything. And I'm gonna use my handle as my starting point for my vinyl, so I'm just gonna get that lined up the best that I can right up against my handle here. And of course, if you were just using a regular skinny tumbler without a handle, you just wanna make sure you have a nice starting line for your vinyl to start with, and then it's as easy as just rolling it up from there. But with this, of course, we, need, we can start to roll it up, and then we're gonna to have to kinda of start cutting a little, some slits into the vinyl to fit around that handle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start rolling that onto the tumbler itself, making sure that I burnish it down really well as I go. And as I'm pushing the vinyl, that paper bat backing, there we go, and just kind of rolls off the back end of it for me as I go, making it a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish rolling that onto my tumbler here. And once I get to my handle, I'm gonna go ahead and cut away anything that I know I really don't need and I don't wanna waste it, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and I can use it for something else. Now not that we are up against our handle, we're gonna take our scissors and we're just going to do two straight lines straight down, just kinda of line it up with where your handle is located, make those slits just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and push it up underneath the handle and bring it over to the other side and make sure that we burnish it down really well at, again as we go. And I'm gonna continue that as well with the uh, with the two side pieces too to kind of make sure that everything is nice and covered. Now I want, I want you guys to keep in mind that we are going to be applying some paint to kind of cover up any, you know, lines or anything like that. So this part, you just wanna make sure that your vinyl is touching, there's no, um, bulges in your vinyl or anything so anything that seems like it might be a nuisance around your handle portion go ahead and cut that off so that way your vinyl is is nice and has a nice secure uh, placement on the the tumbler base itself which I will show you guys here in a second. So I have it wrapped around completely. Now I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to kind of trim anything away that came up onto the handle itself. I'm just again making sure that it is nice and smooth and flat for me. And once we have that all trimmed up, now we're gonna go ahead and take a straight edge. I just have a ruler here and I'm going to line that ruler up with the bottom of my tumbler so that way I have a nice straight line. I'm gonna line it up and just use my X-Acto knife and run right along that seam so that way I have a nice finishing point for my vinyl. 
Now, after you peel back all that extra vinyl that we wanted to trim off, now we're going to come through and trim up around our rim. Now, there wasn't too much of that vinyl over the edge of my rim, so I'm just going to kind of do it old school, and I'm going to take a very sharp X-Acto knife, and I'm going to kind of have it at a slant and just make that cut all the way around, removing any excess that might be hanging over. And it, this will also expose a little bit of that silver around the rim as well. The main thing about doing it this way is if you do do it this way, you just want to make sure that your knife is very sharp because if your knife is not very sharp, all it will do is just kind of shred the vinyl rather than give yourself a nice smooth cut. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this, they do sell trim uh, or rim cutters out there that you can purchase so you, that way you have a nice smooth look every single time. And I'll make sure to put one down in the description box for you guys. But I don't do vinyl wraps that often. So like I said, I just kind of do it this old school way. <laughs> All right, we did it. Look at that. You did an amazing job. I love how yours is looking. Looks fabulous. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that that rim is nice and flush against my tumbler. You just want to make sure everything's good to go because we are going to be painting our cowhide look straight over this vinyl. So for the cowhide look, we are going to be needing just a basic fluffy brush, just a Dollar Dollar Tree makeup brush. I have this old, just, I think it's about a half inch chip brush, which is going to provide that kind of more fur look. I also have some white acrylic paint. I have some glue that you need to use. Uh, you could use Mod Podge, whichever way you want to go with that. And you want to use some white glitter. So I'm going to be using Pinnacle from SSCGlitters.com if you would like to purchase that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a 50-50 mix of glue and acrylic paint. So you did not need this much. I, I didn't know how much I was going to need, but you really didn't need that much. So 50-50 mix of of glue and paint and this is what we're going to be using to adhere that glitter so after I got that in there I'm just gonna stir that up really good with my fluffy brush and then I'm going to test it out on the bottom of my tumbler to make sure that it is the color that I would like and it is the color that I, that I would like so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting that on to my tumbler I'm just gonna start with the silver portions first it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna come through and do some dabbling techniques over top to give it that more fur look so I'm gonna coat the bottom I'm gonna coat the handle really well again it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna come through and, and do now if you want it more perfect you could tape it off so that way you don't get paint on your vinyl so if you if you want it to have a little bit more of a straighter edge to it rather than the fur look go ahead and tape it up and, and do it that way so after I get everything coated in my white we're gonna go ahead and grab that chip brush and take a little bit more of our paint and glue mixture and we're just going to start tapping that down around the edge of our bottom here and as you can see it's already starting to make that fur look for us after I completely go around the bottom there making that more rough texture of our white I'm going to go ahead and start on my handles as well now you know not every single one of these is going to look exactly the same you can try to make them look as similar as possible but each one's going to be just a little bit more different because you never know you know where this brush might take you you know or your imagination so again however much of this cowhide look you want is completely up to you because there is no right or wrong when it comes to making art. I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up a bit here so you guys can kind of see the pattern that I ended up making for myself. I just wanted to make sure that it was it was pretty fluid. I, I did connect some up to the very top. I did connect a bit of that handle down to the base itself. So again, wherever or however much you wanna add is completely up to you. And you do wanna use a fair amount of your glue and paint mixture so that way you know that you're, it won't dry too quick and, ha and your glitter has uh, something to adhere to. So as you can see here, it's, it looks a bit, crazy so again we're going to take that fluffy brush and we're going to kind of tone down some of that those peaks and valleys in our glue here making sure it's as smooth as we can be without disturbing too much of that fur look that we have on the edges there so just come through and just kind of make sure it's not too gloopy in areas and then after that we are going to go ahead and come through and glitter up our tumbler now, because we're gonna be adding black spots over top of this, you really wanna make sure that this is nice and dry before we move on to that next step. That's gonna really help and make sure that your black glitter won't adhere down to areas you don't want it adhering down to. So after I get this glittered up, I'm gonna stick this off to the side and you might be tempted to kind of sweep any extra glitter off too. Don't do it, we'll, we'll do it after it's dry, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that off to the side. I'm gonna let that dry completely and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. 
And don't forget to wash your brushes. We are going to need that chip brush this next round, so don't forget to do that. I, sometimes I forget. <laughs> Now that it is nice and dry, we're gonna come through with our bigger chip brush and we're gonna sweep away any extra glitter that just didn't get adhered down. Now I'm only doing one solid color for my spots over top. I'm just gonna be using a basic black. So again, I'm gonna do a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic paint and glue. So that's all you wanna do for that. So whatever color you wanna use, you could even double it up. You could do you know two different colors if you'd like. There's lots of different colored cows out there. It doesn't have to be black. You could do you know brown. And the, there's all kinds of uh, uh, different cows out there. So the glitter that I'm going to be using today is December Sky. That's going to be for our black spots here. So now that our mixture is all mixed up, there we go. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take that same chip brush we used for our white. And we're going to start dabbling that around inside of the white. Again, basically doing just like how we did the, the underneath portion, just with this different color. And I don't want to cover up too much and I am gonna take it and just kind of tap up into the vinyl too, kind of just giving it just a little bit more of a look to it, you know, so. But if you've ever done leopard spots, glittered leopard spots, I mean, it's pretty much almost the same, except you're making a cow look, you know, it's very, very simple. So after I get this all tapped down, my coloring all tapped down, I'm gonna go ahead and come through and glitter up each spot as I go. So just like the white glitter base, this is very abstract. It's really however much you want to add to it, you can add to it. You know, don't don't be afraid of it. Just kind of get in there, dabble it around, bring it up onto the vinyl a little bit. Now, I know I didn't want to uh, cover up too much more of the vinyl. I wanted to make sure that I didn't do that too much, but I just wanted just a little bit of it coming up and over. And I am making sure that I, I get that handle really good, just kind of adding just little accents here and there, giving it a little bit more of a look. And to finish it up, I'm just going to do a little bit more on the bottom and we have our, our glitter cow look going for us. So again, we're just doing, we just want to do a 50-50 mix of whatever color you want to use with your glue. You want to mix that up really good and just take a small chip brush and just tapping it up and down to give us that kind of more fur-like look. And you're going to let that first layer dry completely before you start adding the black portion and just pretty much do the same exact thing like you did with the white, but with the black coming through and just kind of tapping around here and there, just making it very abstract and applying your glitter as you go because we're doing a little bit thinner this time around we're not putting it on so thick this round so so that way in case it wants to dry quicker we're going to go ahead and cover up that glue now and of course after you get done doing all this you're going to set that off to the side you're going to let that dry absolutely completely and then we're ready to move on to the next step and again don't don't brush it off yet either okay we'll do that after it's dried completely all right it is nice and dry and we're ready again to sweep all that extra glitter off that just didn't adhere down so just give it a good good sweep then after that we're going to go ahead and take it outside and we're going to spray it down really well with our semi-gloss clear here this is really going to help and make sure that those glitters don't shift around and go places we don't want them to go so i'm going to go do that let that dry completely and before i apply my epoxy i'm going to go ahead and give it the glove test making sure those glitters aren't going anywhere it looks good to me now i have 20 milliliters of epoxy and i'm going to go ahead and coat my tumbler in all 20 mls of that epoxy and this is just me finishing up here uh, getting that epoxy on you just want to really want to make sure that you coat up that handle really well making sure that everything is nice and coated and then place it onto your turner then you're gonna hit it up really good with your torch. And then about 40 minutes or so, I'm gonna come back and just check and make sure that everything is nice and even, because I'm just using a regular set of epoxy. I'm just gonna check and make sure there's no nothing going on with my handles, making sure there's no lumps forming at the bottom of the top. And if there is, I'll just come through and kind of pull away what I need to at that point, hit it up one more time with my torch, and then I'm gonna let that cure completely. Now that it is nice and cured, I am gonna go ahead and trim up my rim. I'm gonna go ahead and sand around the rim and a little bit on the handle as well. I don't wanna to sand too much because these decals, if you put these decals over top of anything that is sanded, you'll be able to see those scuff marks underneath. So if you find yourself having to sand it a lot, you're gonna to need to go ahead and give it another coat of epoxy before you put your decals on because you don't want to see those scratches underneath your decals. So I'm just making sure that I'm keeping it kind of in areas that I know will be okay once I apply all my little decals down i am using some water slides coming up here too but those should be fine over this light scuffing that i did around the bottom and around the rim now that that's done i'm just going to make sure that all that debris is nice and off that tumbler so that way it doesn't get stuck underneath our decals 
No, on that same accent sheet that I had gotten from my Muse box, uh, this decal was on there as well. I didn't use the Rodeo Vibes. I ended up using this Wild Soul to kind of go with it. I just, I, I just really liked the flowers and the quote too, so... But these are white back decals, meaning everything around the image and the words is clear. And just the image itself has white backing so that way it can be on a darker style tumbler. So you just want to trim that out really good. And then I'm just going to line it up and see where I would like it. So after I got that all figured out, I'm going to go ahead and peel the paper backing off of the decal. And then I'm just going to place that down right where I would like it. And then after that, I'm just going to make sure that I come through and burnish that down really well. So the great thing about these decals is the ease, just how easy they are to use, which, you know, is really nice. <laughs> and the second thing is, is once the epoxy goes over top of these, you can't see the outline of where you cut at all. I mean, it completely fades with the epoxy. As long as you burnish it down really, really well, it's, it's pretty much good to go here. So I wanted to add just a couple extra things and I found these boho kind of flower images on Creative Fabric. I'll make sure to put it down in the description box for you guys um, where I got them. Uh, and I printed them out on clear water slide paper. There we go. If you're brand new and you don't know what clear water slide paper is, I will attach a video for you guys to watch if you would like to, to see how to do them up. Super simple. You print them out, you, you give them a good sealer with your clear spray, you let that dry, and you pretty much use water to take that off of its backing so you can slide it onto your tumbler. So I'm pretty much just taking these extra little accents that I printed out and I'm just going to slide them right over top of the white area, kind of peeking from you know, out of the black area into the white area. I don't want it too much going out into the vinyl portion that we did, just a little bit here and there, just, just kind of add a little extra to it. But after you figure out where you want your little decals there, you just want to make sure that you come through and wick away all that water out from underneath your decals so that way it is nice and adhered down to your tumbler. If you don't make sure that you get all that water out from under there, when it dries, it could turn like this white color and you definitely don't want that. So just make sure you get all that water out from underneath. Now after, I didn't do too many of these. Like I said, I just wanted little extra accents here and there. So I think I did like two around the front. I did one on the bottom and then I did, I think, one around the back as well. And I'm also gonna come through and do one along the handle as well. So don't again, don't be afraid to kind of trim these up, cut them, make them fit how you want them to fit. For example, on the handle, I just basically left just a little bit of the flowers and some of those feathers just until it was gonna fit properly around my handle area. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off because I don't want that to be a nuisance when I go to put that on. I'm gonna go ahead and place that into my water and slide that right onto where I would like it on my handle. Now, if you put your decals into your water and all you can see is a bunch of color floating off of your decal, that means it wasn't sealed properly. So you might want to take your other decals back out and give them another seal to make sure that doesn't happen with the rest of them. So that's the only thing I can think of that could possibly happen. You just, you know, want to make sure they're nice and sealed and they should slide off super easy for you right onto your tumbler. Now, after you get all your little decals applied and you make sure all that water is wicked out, all you want to do is set that off to the side and let that dry completely. I let mine dry for about 30 minutes to an hour, and then it is ready for its last finishing coats of epoxy. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.